Dear friends, as we come together for this Holy Eucharist, let's bring all our prayers as we come closer to the celebration of the Paschal Triduum. We are with Jesus in his sorrow, in his passion. Let's bring all our intentions that we have. Let's surrender ourselves, our families, and let's look into our hearts whether we are really ready to receive Jesus we like to pray for the departed soul of Visi Bon Bamon during this Mass and also for the grand nephew of Sister Lita, Raphael, who celebrates his birthday today. Let's pray for these intentions and also all of the we have in our hearts and ask Jesus really to hear, to bless us at this Holy Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's ask pardon for all our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. Lord, you came to call us sinners, Christ have, mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty Lord have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, grant us so to celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's passion, that we may merit to receive your pardon. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Islands, listen to me. Pay attention, remotest peoples. The Lord called me before I was born, from my mother's womb, he pronounced my name. He made my mouth a sharp sword and hid me in the shadow of his hand. He made me into a sharpened arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I shall be glorified. While I was thinking, I have toiled in vain. I have exhausted myself for nothing. And all the while my cause was with the Lord, my reward with my God, I was honored in the eyes of the Lord, my God was my strength. And now the Lord has spoken, he who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, to gather Israel to him. It is not enough for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob, and bring back the survivors of Israel. I will make you the light of the nations, so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Your response, my lips will tell of your help. My, my lips will tell of your help. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me, free me, pay heed to me, and save me. Your response? My, My lips will tell of your justice. Be a rock where I can take refuge, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. Free me from the hand of the wicked. Your response? My lips will tell of your help. It is you, O Lord, who are my hope. My trust, O Lord, since my youth. On you I have leaned from my birth. From my mother's womb you have been my help. Your response? My, my lips, lips will, will tell, tell of, of your, your help. help. My lips will tell of your justice and day to day of your help. Though I can never tell it all, O God, you have fought me from my mouth. And I proclaim your wonder still. Your response? My, My lips will tell of your, your help. help. Gospel acclamation. Glory and praise to you, O Christ, 
Hail to you, our King. Obedient to the Father, you were led to your crucifixion, as a meek lamb is led to the slaughter. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Chapter 13, verses 21 and following. While at supper with his disciples, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, I tell you most solemnly, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, wondering which he meant. The disciple Jesus loved was reclining next to him. Simon Peter signed to him and said, Who is it, Lord? It is the one, replied Jesus, to whom I give the piece of bread that I shall dip in the dish. He dipped the piece of bread and gave it to Judas, son of Simon Scariot. At that instant, after Judas had taken the bread, Satan entered him, and Jesus then said, What are you going to do? Do quickly. None of the others at table understood the reason he said this. Since Judas had charge of the common fund, some of them thought Jesus was telling him buy what is required for the festival or telling him to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the piece of bread, he went out. Night had fallen. When he had gone, Jesus said, Now has the Son of Man been glorified, and in him God has been glorified. If God has been glorified in him, God will in turn glorify him in himself and will glorify him very soon. My little children, I shall not be with you much longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. Simon Peter said, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow me now. You will follow me later. Peter said to him, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Lay down your life for me, answered Jesus. I tell you most solemnly, before the cock crows, you will have disowned me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are inching closer to the Passion event of Christ and we find the readings the Lord is already in the upper room with the disciples. The two sides of today's reading, like two sides of the coin, are one Judas, the other side is Peter. Judas, who will betray Peter, who will also, in a way, deny Jesus. I was reflecting on this reading, and we know, I'm sure, Judas was with Jesus at least for three years minimum because he was like the administrator handling money so we know by religious rules an administrator will not get charged immediately at least an experience of one or two years so which means Judas must have been with Jesus let's say at least three years in the ministry and in this three years when at the last supper scene when Jesus says one of you will betray me it's interesting that the disciples all of them are not aware that it is Judas, which means two sides. One, Jesus never spoke about Judas anything negative. Or the other way, Judas also acted very well. Others were not able to catch him or understand him. So John puts an event post that he is to handle the money of the poor and also help himself. Of course, that is much written later after the betrayal. But come to the scene. I was wondering today when I thought, why couldn't this Jesus take Judas to his room and have a one-to-one -one counseling? Because as a Lord, he knew that this will be the person who will betray him and would have spoken to him maybe one hour, two hour sessions and spoken and said, why don't you change your mind? We don't find it, though the Lord never speaks about it. Interesting, Peter, who is very impulsive, jumps at everything. It is a Peter who is always, who gets always a scolding. The Lord calls him devil and all that. But he is there. Judas, 
who is really actually who will do what is called so called betrayal devil's work the lord calls him friend you know if you look at the correct translation friend what do you need to do do quickly and peter look at the two of course there is always an argument is saying that judas he was necessary in the act of salvation if he was not there how would jesus enter into the passion the betrayal death etc no i think human freedom that's why jesus respected the human freedom he never no spoke or try to counsel judas the other way that is something that the lord will respect our freedom he will invite call long for us but the choice is always ours look behind again peter and judas in a way both did the same you know peter betrayed the lord and judas too openly though but the difference is one looked at within judas looked back at himself you know when we look at our own sins and when we feel guilty of it that is the creation of the evil one guilt is not what god wants what god wants is of course tears for our sins but to his mercy to his forgiveness and that is what we find in peter i'm sure the moment when we look within these days and look at the cross to realize the answer for our sins answer for our sorrow let this be the feeling that the lord's mercy has washed us clean and we are assured in his love that's what we are going to experience at this holy eucharist where the lord is going to give us his body and blood and his mercy his love and his forgiveness let's pray that we may really become worthy of god's love and we feel proud to be in his loving mercy Let us pray, my dear friends, that this sacrifice of mine and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for the benefit of all His holy church. Look favorably, O Lord, we pray on these offerings of Your loving mercy, and to those You make partakers of these sacred gifts, grant a share in their fullness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your greatness, since by the wondrous powers of the cross. Your judgment on the world is now revealed, and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy God, God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is you who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore almighty father we bless you through Jesus Christ your son who comes in your name he himself is a word that brings salvation the hand you extend to sinners the way by which your peace is offered to us when we ourselves had turned away from you on account of all our sins you brought us back to be reconciled o lord so that converted at last to you we might love one another through your son whom for our sake you handed over to death 
and now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, at whose command we fulfil when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life for us to set us free, as he reclined at supper, Jesus himself took the bread into his sacred hands and giving you thanks, broke the bread, said the blessing, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, Jesus took the chalice of blessing in his sacred hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit that takes away everything that divides us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, our bishops, and all the clergy and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with our Saint Joseph, with the Apostles, all the saints, Saint Anthony, Saint John Bosco, and with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship, we pray especially for Visibon, Bamon, and all who have died in your friendship, bring us to share with them in the unending banquet of unity, in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth through Jesus our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. Let's pray for the coming of God's kingdom, trusting in God's love, forgiveness and mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from all sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's share each other God's peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, the merciful one who forgives all our sins. Blessed are we who are called to receive him. For those of us who cannot receive Jesus physically, ask the Lord to come spiritually into your hearts, into your life, into your family. Trust in the power of his forgiveness and mercy. His love is something that transforms us. 
Give your life to him. Let him take control. Let his mercy rule you, not your sins, not your guilt, but his forgiveness. Let us pray. Nourished by these saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you have fed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we kneel for the adoration, let this be the feeling in us that the Lord who is before us, the Lord who died for us, is the one who did all this to take away our sins. Blessed and praised be every moment. In the most holy and divine sacrament. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and as shall be, in the world of God. Let's thank Jesus for coming into our hearts, for filling us. We have received him in his body and blood. Spiritually he has come into us. Let's look at him, not at our sins. Let's look at his mercy, not the feeling of guilt within. Trusting the Lord who forgives. And his love, mercy is always there. Whatever has been my life. The Lord is calling us to come back, to give to Him. The Lord went to the cross to call our sins, and it is our sins that crucified Him. The greatest gift of the Lord is His forgiveness to me, to each of us. No one else, nobody else can grant me that but God alone. And every time when I look at the cross, the Lord whom I have nailed is because of my sins. Let's be assured, the Lord is asking us in return a renewed life from us. To return to Him, to return to His love, to return to His mercy. And a decision to walk closer to Him every day. To live our old ways and trust 
and believe that when we are in the Lord, with the Lord, with the crucified one, the Lord will transform us. As we sit, sing this song, Were you there when they crucified my Lord? We know that we were there. My sin, my weakness, my guilt. Let's give everything once again to the Lord. The Lord still hangs on the cross with that assurance that the Lord's mercy, forgiveness is a reality and salvation is an everyday event in my life. And what I need is a commitment to the Lord. Lord, every day, every moment, I will remember you died for my sins. You died to save me. So I will live every part way, every way of sin and come back to you and grow closer to you, grow in love to you. Let's sing the song. thank the Lord for this event of the Lord dying for me and let's ask the Lord to fill us with his loving mercy this event of salvation is for me for my sins for my change and for my new life as we ask the Lord to bless us let's surrender our life let's resolve before the the Lord. Lord, here is my life with all his new decisions, with his new life and I'm going to walk close to you. The Lord, give me your mercy. Let my sin be past and let the life ahead in your grace, in your mercy be what awaits me. Blessed and praised be every moment. Blessed and praised be every moment. Blessed and praised be every moment. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be for the world and amen. And stand. Pray for the world and for us.
most merciful triune god we come to you in our weakness we come to you in our fear we come to you with a trust for you alone are our hope we place before you the disease present in our world we turn to you in our time of need bring wisdom to doctors give understanding to scientists and to our caregivers with compassion and generosity bring healing to those who are ill protect those who are most at risk give comfort to those who have lost a loved one welcome those who have died into your eternal home stabilize our communities unite us in a compassion remove all fear from our hearts fill us with confidence in your care jesus i trust in you jesus i trust in you jesus i trust in you amen Pray to the Holy Family. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, in you we contemplate the splendor of the true love. To you we turn with trust, Holy Family of Nazareth. Grant that our families too may be places of communion, prayer and be authentic schools of the gospel and small domestic churches. Holy Family of Nazareth, may our families never again experience violence, rejection and division. May all who have been hurt find ready comfort and healing. Holy Family of Nazareth, make us aware of the sacredness of the family and its beauty in God's plan. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, graciously hear our prayer. God bless you.